Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me, back together once again, the dynamic duo. We're like Kane and The Undertaker. You know what I mean? Choke slamming these other podcasts left and right. BQ, say what's up to the people. Yo, what up? We're like the major brothers, man. Um, Yo, everyone, thanks for rolling with the punches these last few weeks. You know, I dropped the, I dropped the bombshell. It's not that big of a bombshell but that uh my computer is having issues my, i'm having lighting issues right now too uh <laughs> having computer you know my uh charging port broke a couple weeks ago and it took me a while to get that thing back from the shop uh so uh i'm glad to, we're glad to be doing this again i hate to just kind of like disappear on people we're not putting the podcast out and there's no like content and everything and i, I feel bad doing that and i Tried to do the cell phone thing, but I, I didn't really like the way it was coming out. So, you know, we are back in the place to be in the in the toxic lounge. Yeah. Is that what they call it on NXT? The uh... <laughs> all the all the toxic. Oh, buddy. Woo. I wish I could get in the toxic lounge, boy. Let me tell you so. You know what's so funny? I remember a few months ago, uh, we were having a conversation off air about um certain things we liked about certain wrestlers. And you mentioned Priscilla Kelly. And and you mentioned a clip. I think it was Priscilla Kelly versus Thunder Rosa. And I watched. It, I was like, "Oh, you are right, sir." <laughs> and uh, and she's now fast forward Gigi Dolan um, in NXT. And I was like, "Man, you know, I gotta say though, like, I wasn't really, I wasn't really like, you know, into it in that way." Um, but a f- probably a week or two ago, she dropped a little picture. And I know you and, said you know, it to me. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I was, I was like, okay, I was like, okay, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here for it. <laughs> so I, I saw like, her for the first time on a Shine pay per view, probably 2015, 2016, and I was just back then. She had black hair, and everyone's like, "Oh, you look like Paige," and that was annoying the piss out of her. So she changed her look. But I remember seeing her back then. Uh, I was like, "Yo." TNA, you know, there's TNA at the time. I was like, yo, TNA needs this girl. You know, like I just yeah. saw, I saw something like in her immediately where I was like, she's not a indie talent. Like I saw that she mm. was bigger than that. You know what mm. I mean? I, I could pick up on that really early. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, like speaking of like indie talents, right? Like I think it's really dope when you see an indie talent and you can see like there's, there's levels to everything, right? And even like on the indies, you can see an indie talent and you can tell somebody that's just kind of maybe going through like fantasy camp, you know, and they're just like doing this because they got some free time and like they're really just, they're not putting really, you know, the effort into it, right? And then you can see other people that are like, yo, this is my plan A. There is no plan B. Yeah. I'm here. I'm at the gym and I'm training and that's it. I probably still live with my mom, but, you know, I'm going all in. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. then you can see some people that are like right in the middle where it's like, hey, look, they got like the character piece, the commitment, but they probably don't have the time to be, you know, in the gym or in the in the ring, you know, enough to develop their craft to a level that's like TV presentable. But they have like the character piece and the presentation completely down. I say it all the time, man, when I see like, um, you know, some of my, my favorite indie talents right now, like Amber Rodriguez, shout out to her. Like, yo, she's got like the look, she does dope vignettes. And I'm like, dog, if she was in like NXT, where they could, you know, like pay her to train. You know what I mean? I'm like, dog, she would be a super duper duper star in no time, right? Um, and you see that with some people, just like you just mentioned with, with the former Priscilla Kelly and the current Gigi Dolan. I'm like, dog, like I see it. I, it, it and like, it's funny because of like the sex appeal piece, right? Like it just made me start paying more attention to her. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute though. Like the whole thing is here. I'm like, the whole thing is there. Like if you start watching, like I jokingly said like, so Gigi Dolan is the new leader of Titans Contraction, right? But the more I watch that, I'm like, she has to eventually be the leader of Toxic Contraction. Like, that has to be where this is going because, like, Mandy Rose is a one-trick pony. You know what I mean? Like, she only has, like, the sex appeal piece. Like, that's, that's it for her. I can see more... I think there's more layers. There's definitely more layers to, like, Gigi Dolan and, and JC Jane. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, Mandy Rose is there as kind of like a shield to help them get over. 
But this is an Impact Wrestling podcast. <laughs> Back to Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Um, speaking of indie talents, right? You had mentioned uh, something about some indie talents um, who have been lucky enough to sign with Impact Wrestling. And we're going to talk about that. But before we do, take a minute real quick and hit that like button, okay? Hit that like button so that everybody knows how much you like this video. I want the number of views to match the number of likes. Get those likes up. Go ahead, smash that like button right now. Hit it. There we go. Okay. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you are subscribed to this channel. And make sure you hit the notification bell so that you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. Now, as I was saying, Impact Wrestling at the Arnold Classic recently brought back Gut Check. And we've already given our views on, you know, what we think about the concept of Gut Check as, you know, as far as them following up on it. But, <clears throat> but what did you think about the winners of this, this uh, current iteration of Gut Check? So the winners are uh, Jason Hotch and Jack Price. And I know this is like new, this isn't news news to you guys. This information came out a couple of weeks ago. Well, obviously, we haven't had an opportunity to sit here and, and uh, rap with you guys and all that, but they're not names I'm familiar with. I think one of them actually followed me on, on Twitter the other day because uh, I followed him and I think he hit me, he followed me back. Um, I don't remember which one, but Lewis was saying that one of them's really good. He, he's familiar with one, he wasn't familiar with the other. So. We're going to see. Again, we, we've got into great detail about what we think of Gut Check. I had to laugh. On 411 Mania, they said the uh, <laughs> the contest was being held by Lance Storm and Johnny Swinger <laughs> instead of Johnny Bravo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the Swing like, Man Damn. Daddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At first, I was like, yo, Swinger was out there, uh, you know, uh, coaching talent. So one thing I thought was funny was uh, – so Bravo put out on social media, you know, to all you talents, you know, paraphrasing, of course, trying out for this thing. Don't come up in here and cut these promos. Like I'm here to make an impact. Right. <laughs> um, let's make an impact. We we've heard that. And, and yeah, we, we have heard that a thousand times. So then <laughs> I just had to laugh and then impact tweets. Congratulations to the 2022 gut check winners for making an impact. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, you can't. You couldn't write this stuff. You could not. Like, do you think they were trolling right there, or do you think that was just like? Um, I hope they were trolling. I'm gonna give them credit and say they were trolling. I don't. Th I don't think they were trolling. I think. I think Bravo made a very. You know, what he said was 100 percent true. Don't don't come in here with that tagline because right, it, we've heard it a thousand times. But the impact Twitter is like, oh, that's a cool thing to say. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. You know. Um, <laughs> And, and it, you know, it's weird, uh, the name Impact itself, there's so little that you can do with it. Mm. That's why when they came out with BTI and it was before the Impact, you know, I was like, dude, I, I freaking hate that name. Yeah. After a while, I was like, okay, BTI, that works. It's marketable, you know, it's whatever. But I always just would get so fresh. It was always something about make an impact and this and this. <laughs> when, I, when I named this channel, I tried my hardest to not use the word Impact, yeah. but... <clears throat> I ultimately had to because I need people to know what the channel was about. Right. Uh, you know, so I try to add the lounge as something a little more uh, original or whatever. But yeah, yeah wow. it's always, you know, make an impact this and, you know, nonstop this. It's, it's yeah, that's yeah. why when they came out with Aftershock, as much as that show sucked, and then even like Explosion, like those were the only two shows in the history of this company that have been like just, I don't know, just different just a different name or they didn't have to factor in impact or something like that. But yeah, I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm just totally like rambling here, but you know, I, I don't know anything about the talent and I, I stick by and I think you do too. Uh, what we've said that sh show us that this means something because right now it doesn't totally agree. You know, Cause it, there's only so much that you can do something over and over. And then it, it just, it just means absolutely nothing. You know, like, I always talk about how I talk about how I mean, excuse me, how I listen to Jim Cornette, and he talks about the AEW product. And every week, someone goes through a table, and every right. every match is the uh, Tope Suicida, mm -hmm. and every match is this, and, and he's like, he, so this uh, actually the pay per view that just came up, MJ or CM Punk got bloody, and then in the match like Moxley and Daniel Bryan got bloody, and he's just like, right. dude, it doesn't mean anything when someone just did it. 
Yeah, and right. it doesn't mean anything when someone's bleeding on every other week on the TV show also. Yeah. You know? That's right. So, uh, yeah, AEW's so full of cliches, but that's that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but the whole point is, you know, at some point, you, you just got to make it mean something. Right now, it means dick. So, right. <laughs> hope, you know, hopefully we see these guys before the next presidential election. <laughs> so, we'll see. Uh, uh, all right, so that that is that is one hot topic in the world of Impact Wrestling. Um, uh, so another another topic that people have been kind of hot on lately is <clears throat> involves a former Impact talent, uh, uh, the the man known as EC3. He's apparently branching off into becoming a promotional uh, owner, promoter, booker, whatever you want to call it, and his control your narrative has gone from a slogan to a marketing campaign, to uh, a series of vignettes, to now it is its own promotion. So uh, CYN, as we'll call it, um, has recently been running a couple of shows. And what what do you think about uh, this whole control your narrative as a promotion? I was, I'm pulling for it. I will say that much. Right now, it looks like a train wreck. Uh, they just announced, I think it was today that you know, formerly Fandango, he's Dirty Dango in NWA. They're like, well, he's part of the company now. And uh, they said, but he won't be using the name Dango. I'm like, oh, my God, thank God. <laughs> and then he's going like the enforcer or something along those lines. I don't remember off the bat. It's something along those lines. Very silly name. And I'm just like, it, it, it's just coming off kind of weird, dude, honestly. Uh and it's everything, the information, well, first of all, the name. When I very when I very first started the podcast and the channel, one of the things I said about TNA early, early, early on was control your narrative or control mm-hmm. your own narrative, control the narrative. I always said that because, uh, and we've talked about it a little bit. WWE does a good job of that. They have something negative comes out and they're they'll hit you over the head four hours later with something so positive that you forget about you know but i always felt that tna and even even now a little bit but it's not it's not the extent as years ago some negative news would hit and that shit would linger for days and it's just like you know what i mean and i was always like control the narrative you know like you don't have to let that define you and they did do that for a long time so i'm kind of behind the idea and the concept but everything is so vague and uh even if you listen to i i love ec3 i always have i'll you'll listen to an ec3 interview and so much of what he's saying doesn't make any sense yes you know like (laughs) they're just asking him something about nxt or wwe or you know tna days and he just starts talking about and i will rain down upon thee with (laughs) and it's just like (laughs) it's so I, I, it's it, I don't know it, it's I don't understand what he says a lot of the time what he's what he's getting at and um the press releases they put out they they again don't make any sense <laughs> and they and then they put out you know okay you know we're getting you know a television deal which we knew it was like they weren't going to be on television television right you know streaming platform that's that's fine mm-hmm. um even if it was on YouTube, that's fine. I mean, I don't give a shit at. Uh, yeah, that I mean, probably would be the best st- way to go. YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I have a Fire Stick, so it don't matter if it's YouTube, it's a channel on TV. Like, it's all the same to me. I don't care. But even when they put that information out, it was so like I don't, I still don't understand what this is or how I'm going to be able to watch it. Right. I don't understand if this is an app or you're telling me this is actually a uh, some kind of channel. Right. You know, and then they call it network television, which it's not network television. You know, um, <laughs> well, it's, it, well it's, it's like it's like the the Impact Lounge Network. You know, <laughs> you're right, right, right. Yeah, and, and you know they're bringing in a lot of people who uh, a lot of fans don't like. Mm. It, you know, so it's it's weird. I'm um, I want to give it a chance. Absolutely. I give everything a chance. You know, I try to give yeah, ML- MLW a chance. I, I don't particularly like it. I keep finding myself trying to give it a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm still giving NWA a chance because I used to love them, and now I'm, it's a chore to watch that show. Mm-hmm. You know, do, you know they actually um, 
uh, I'm going to be out of town for vacation this week, but they uh, actually contacted me that they were going to comp me a ticket to the pay-per-view. Oh, yeah? Or a media pass. And they said, nice. if, they even said if I start covering NWA that they'll provide me wrestlers for interviews. So wow. it's funny that, like, I can't even get on the press pass for Impact Wrestling. Uh, oh, I, you know what? So I, we can talk about that off air. Actually, I looked into that. I looked into that. And I, I, I don't know if, if the person who, who, who we need to talk to is aware that, you know, I'm a part of this, this uh, production here. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think I, I might have ability to gain access. I don't know, whatever. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just funny. And NWA is like, oh, we'll give you people and we'll get you into the show free. Like, Impact wouldn't get me into a show free. Yeah, right, right, right. And I don't, again, I don't know why Impact doesn't do that. Like, I think that, again, Impact's number one problem is perception, right? So they need to start greasing up the media people, right? Like, <clears throat> people who can make them seem and feel like a big deal. If you're going to be in Louisville, you need to have an invitation out to every radio personality, every small time TV anchor. You know what I mean? Like you, if, if I was coming to town and I'm impact, I'm trying to comp and give a VIP treatment to every media person who will possibly talk about me. You know what I mean? Like everybody, anybody, I think impact wrestling should do this. I love the AEW does the scrums after the shows. I thought yeah. the impact should do that for the longest time. You know what I mean? Because like, mm -hmm. All of these, um, you know, wrestling journalists, they all need content. You know what I mean? So if you're inviting them in, giving them access to the wrestlers to ask questions about the event, they're going to cover your product. And if you're giving them, uh, if you're giving them stuff to, to create content for their own blogs or, or sites or whatever, they're probably going to cover you favorably. You know what I mean? They probably yeah. are, right? So, like, I, again, I don't know why Impact doesn't do that, but what do I know, right? What, I'm just, just what, what are your thoughts on the on the CYN thing, though? Like, Ron oh. Strowman's like, this is the place to be. Feels like he kind of stole that from someone, but he's he's like, this is the only place to be for, you know, and they're, we're going to, they're talking about we're going to, you know, people are going to make a living working here and this and this. Like, there's people who are not making a living in Impact. Right, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's interesting um, stuff. So I, I okay. I'm not really sure exactly what to think about the whole CYM thing. I think it's funny on some level because I feel like um, like EC3 has like I, so here's what here's what I, what I honestly think. I think that like this whole thing has just ballooned out of control, right? Like this whole control your narrative uh, thing started as like how he was re-debuting himself after his last release from WWE, you know, trying to take control of his narrative. And, you know, like, um, and, and I think it, it was a combination of feeling disappointed in the fact that going back to WWE didn't work out the way that he hoped it would, you know. Um, and I think what happened was people started buying in to to the stuff he was saying, you know, all this control your narrative stuff, because he was letting it spiral into like all of these, like, you know, conspiracy theory sounding things. And if you've been following EC3 on Twitter, you know where he leans on certain things. And that particular group is very susceptible to the, uh, the, the cult like uh, narratives. Okay. And I think that like by, 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 presenting in this way that he developed a little cult following and i think it it got to his head you know what i mean i, I think that like he really started believing that he is this cult follower i mean his cult this cult leader and one of the people in his cult is braun Strowman, and and also rockstar spud and moose might be in there too you know what i mean and 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 people so people want like a bold leader to like speak out and say the things that they're afraid to. And I think he's the voice of the confused ass people. You know what I mean? And I think that, that a, a lot of people who just feel confused and don't trust anything, they feel like what he's saying is truth instead of gibberish. And, um, and, and I think they follow it like for real. And I think that like, I think for the guy who plays EC3, I think that the line between who he really is and EC3 has become very blurry. And I don't know that when he cuts on that camera, how much of it is a character, 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, I, that, right. That, 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 that's how I feel. Um, I think, I think you know, he's very disenfranchised and disillusioned with his experience in the wrestling business. Um, and as people who watch Impact, I think uh, a lot of us could see this towards the end of his time in Impact when they gave him the grand championship and he could not have possibly looked more checked out. You You're know, right. like on camera, cutting narrative, uh, excuse me, cutting narratives, cutting promos, basically making fun of the championship he was holding uh, and, and the concept of it. And it was just like, why are you even here? Right. And so then he went back to WWE and went, went to NXC, NXT and, you know, um, and it just it just never it never happened. It never kind of panned out. And so, listen, I applaud him for trying to do something because being a creator in the media space, you have to try to find some way to stand out. Um, but in the words of, uh, the, uh, the, the, some people's great Hulk Hogan, uh, sometimes jabroni marks work themselves into a shoot work and a work and don't know when a work is a work. And <laughs> I mean, like, I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know what's really going on here. Um, and like people have made all types of fun of this, this concept of this promotion. You know, people were saying this is like the, <laughs> the 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 MAGA promotion and like um and they put out like a press release talk about like we don't subscribe to any like political narrative or any all this stuff but then you see little things like they're gonna have a uh uh what do they call it, like a rant room the rant room that one can, person like, showed up pay, to. right to go in into the room and and yell at a wrestler with no consequences and I'm like dog like I apologize if this comment triggers anybody, but that's the most white shit I ever heard in my life, dog. Like, who wants to just pay money and scream in somebody's face? That is the most white man shit I have ever, ever, <laughs> ever heard of, dog. And you, yo, and yo, think about it. Think about it. When you see all of these incidents of fans crossing the line with athletes, like, you know, saying too much or touching them or doing too much, it's always white dudes, man. Like, what is... What is it about like being a white dude where you just can't understand the line between I pay my money, but I'm still a spectator. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I'm not actually in the show and this person doesn't work for me just because I paid my money. Right. So this idea that I'm going to pay my money and I'm going to go get the scream in this person's face. Like, you know what I mean? Like you work for me. We, uh, we, we pay your salary. Like, you know, like all of this stuff. I'm just like, dog, like, this is just like, uh, again, you've done it to yourself. All the things people say about you. And then, like you said, look at the people that you're hiring. Okay. This is not everybody, but you're hiring a lot of people with some really terrible reputations and reputations that in a lot of cases are very well earned. Okay. And this is how you cho are choosing to present yourself. So you're talking about controlling your narrative. Well, you're creating a narrative that you are like some haven for the angry white man. And that that's, that's it. again, I'm not making this up, right? This is the perception based on what you're putting out there. So um, in all, you know, in j just like anyone, you know, I wish you well, I, you know, um, I, there, there's plenty of people out there who uh, love this type of thing. So <laughs> yeah, good it's, luck. It's it's an extremely niche audience that I think they're going to, they're going to go for, you know, the anti-vaxxers and all this shit. So, right. Yes. Um, so it, uh, it, it, it's, it reminds me of like, remember, remember LeVar Ball started his own, uh, basketball <laughs> yeah. league. He said it was going to rival the N NBA. <laughs> And he was like, this actually, the, like the, the JBA of wrestling. the JBA, dude. And they were actually playing in huge arenas, and there was like 200 people in an NBA sized arena, you know, lasted oh one season. God. It, it kind of reminds there's also this video on the internet. Uh, it's from another country. I don't know where it is, but they're, uh, it's like a Black Friday sale or something like that. It's like, uh, they're like a little warehouse selling like appliances. And every single employee is on the other side of the the sliding garage doors, and they're banging the door. And they're like, "All right, open them." And it the it ro raises all the way up, and there's not a single person in line waiting to come in. <laughs> you know, like that's what I feel like this could potentially be. You know, it's like okay, right. you know, here's the rat room. Everyone come in, and then one person right. steps in. So, I, but at the same time, I want to say I appreciate them trying to do 
something different. I always talk about trying to be outside the box and everything, but you can't go too far outside the box because when he was Ethan Carter the third, he had some direction because that you know TNA Creative was like, hey, this is the character, you know, make it your own, but here's the guidelines. Right. And then he became EC3, yeah. and it kind of just went a completely different direction. Right. And and even you know. I think a lot of the reason WWE couldn't do anything with him is because when he showed up, they're like, well, what is EC3? What, right. you know, to, to the uh, WWE audience, what is that? There's no backstory to it. There's nothing, you know, like TNA had the backstory. Ethan Carter to the third is EC3. He's, he's this and this, but when you just show up and you're just EC3, like there's, you know, so I don't think, I don't think he knew what that meant back then, dude. He's just mm. like, that's just my name. I, I yeah, just yeah. there was something happened here, man, where it it's just got disconnected with reality a little bit. Yeah, you know, you know like totally. Like like I, he's called himself like the essential character three. And like 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 you said, man, like I just I feel like a lot of it is like got this idea, wanna try to figure it out, but like, you know, and listen, I, I wish him all the best. I really, I really do. Um, but it's just I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I there's been nothing that I've seen that's really made me interested in watching it. You know. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, like, so. But you know, I, I wish them all the best, man. I wish. Uh, yeah. Health, wealth, and success to all people. I, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to see it do well. So. Um. Well, real quick before we go any further. Um, I just want to, you know, give a, a quick shout out to uh, Big E. I know this will probably never come across your ears, but um, man, um, brother, so positive after, you know, um, breaking, literally breaking his neck on live television because somebody, you know, dumped him on his head. And, um, and man, you just the inspiration um, to any, any and all people um who are like going through something and um speedy recovery and you know take care of your health man like there's life outside of wrestling if you choose to come back and pursue wrestling you know you of course we're gonna be here we got love for you but um you know think of your your health first you know like you you did it all man you reached the top of the mountain you know wrestling is uh it's just you know all occupations are secondary you know the, the key to life is your health and your happiness and you know oh like i think biggie is universally like viewed as like one of the best dudes in the wrestling business and um and it's just really you know sad to see something like that happen to him you know we could have just witnessed the end of his career and um and you know that is that just that sucks to see that happen for somebody but um you know he's a talented dude very smart dude and uh, I'm sure there'll be more bags for him outside of the wrestling business. Um, all right. So this week on Impact Wrestling, see what we got here. This week on Impact Wrestling, Josh Alexander kicked off the show making after making his shocking return at Sacrifice where following an attack on Impact World Champion Moose, he revealed that not only has he signed a new multi-year contract, but he also has challenged Moose for the Impact World title at Rebellion. Alexander vows to exact his revenge on Moose after he stole the Impact World title from him at Bound for Glory. Honor No More interrupts, and their leader, Eddie Edwards, claims that Alexander has had everything handed to him on a silver platter. Alexander is shocked by the way Edwards has changed in recent weeks, joining Honor No More and blaming everyone else for his shortcomings. Former ROH world champion Matt Taven comes to the events of Edwards, but Alexander fires back and says that when Taven won his company's world title, it put them out of business. Things got physical as Alexander uh falls victim to the numbers game and is beaten down by honor no more until rich swan and willie mack make the save impact executive vice for president and bq's favorite character scott demore announces two huge matchups for tonight in the main event eddie evers will go one-on-one -on -one with rich swan also kenny king will battle willie mack and that match starts right now so after that matt so uh the you know willie mack and kenny king 
they had a pretty good match. Uh, Willie Mack actually won with the frog splash. And so what would you think of how we got started here? It, it was cool. So first of all, the episode was was pretty good. I thought it was very easy to consume. It, it uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, NWA is like a chore to me. I still watch it because I kind of like it. But, you know, pre-pandemic, you could watch like three, four of those episodes in a row easy. Like now it's like. I can only handle one at a time and then I'm going to probably fall behind because it's just so hard to consume. Uh, I found this episode really easy to consume. A lot of Scott, a uh, lot of we on the night. Uh, <laughs> it felt like more than usual. You're promoting the new Japan card over we on the night. So that's classic too. Um, but, I, but I thought it was a cool way to open the show. Uh, Scott came out right away. I'm just like, here we fucking go, dude. I just, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, you guy. I mean, he's always yelling at the top of his lungs, man. Um, and a lot of a lot of guys do that, but the microphones they use are not top notch, man. So it it's just yeah. annoying when that when when anyone does that. I think Impact has to be careful here creatively because everything Eddie is saying. I mean, Eddie is getting booed because Honor Honor No More is an unlikable group, so right. he's getting booed. He's not getting out there, going out there, getting cheered, but. The things he's saying are are true. Like he's not. Right. We're talking about like EC3's delusion, you know. Like Eddie Edwards, his character is not delusional. Like he's saying the stuff that we were saying as fans, right? And the people are, are connecting with that. And I think if they're not careful, uh, you usually don't have this problem with the Impact fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, they usually know who to cheer for, who to boo. Boo. They're not, you know, confused like watching AW, but. If they're not careful, the the crowd is going to get more behind Eddie than it is Josh in this, you know, in all this. Uh, I a lot of people were really they really really liked the way Josh came back, and I stand by what I said. Uh, and, and it you know it turns out that it was a storyline, but it was ba it's exactly what I said. It was based off re real events going on. Like the Visa thing was in it was a real thing. But um, I, could, I forgot where I was going with that. But but so, I do think that they have to be we, careful. You you want to linger on the Josh Alexander thing for a little bit? So tell me why, like what what was the do you, what 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 like information do we have that lets us know that like the visa thing was like a, a actual real thing? I, I think that was just reported by one of these sites like Four One One Mania or, or Wrestling Inc or whatever Fightful. I, I think that just came through the sheets. So okay. um, I, I know where I was going with it is that a lot of people liked the way he returned. Mm -hmm. I, I watch stuff like I'm, I try to consume it. Like I'm watching something that's real and I'm just like, why is there a TV camera outside? But right. that's beside the point. People really liked it. I maintain the fact that all, all they do is pop the impact crowd. Like I don't, I don't, I think people are like, Oh, this, this made Josh a huge star when he came back. Like, I, I don't know that people were, we've talked about it before, the impact circle just buzzing about something, which is, is mm -hmm. good. You do want that. I, I don't want to say we don't want that, but I don't think it was as impactful as people want to say it was him coming back and resigning. You know, I don't think, you know, I see a lot of memes go, floating around where people are like showing AEW fans crying and shit. I'm like, dude, I don't think <laughs> AEW fans were, oh, we're getting Josh Alexander. I know he was name dropped on the show once, but, right, you know. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. That was just something that came. I, I understood. I didn't see it. I guess you could just say, I just heard <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that. Yeah. That's I mean, like, so, shit. so for me, this, this whole thing screamed angle from the beginning, just for the simple fact of like, listen, if you, if you're taking somebody off your TV show, you don't talk about them anymore. You know what I mean? Like if, right. there, was, if there was, if there was anything, uh, that was like a dead giveaway that like, this was all a wrestling angle was like, they were they kept explaining to you why Josh Alexander was not on TV. So they don't want you to forget about Josh Alexander so that when you see Josh Alexander again, you have a reaction. You know, so, so as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, this is obviously a wrestling angle. You know what I mean? Um, and like whether or not his visa expired, we'll never know. You know, he could say that. I mean, and, and that's totally possible, right? It could have been like, you know, a lapse in uh uh, somebody could have just, you know, forgotten or, or made some sort of clerical error. And it's possible that could have happened, but also this is a good angle. This is a good angle. And like, I, I've been meaning to say this for a long time. 
why do we care so much? Like, what? why do wrestling fans want so badly to not get worked? We're here to get worked. Getting yeah. worked is fun. That's called enjoying the show, right? When you sit down and watch Batman or, 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 or Avengers, you're getting worked. Guess right. what? Robert Downey Jr. is alive and well, hopefully, as of this recording. Yeah. Um, like, he didn't die at the hands of Thanos. You got worked, okay? Like, what do you want me to tell you? Like it's, like, it's a TV show, man. Like, let yourself go. Stop trying to know everything. Like, who cares if you got worked? You're supposed to get worked. Are you not watching this to get worked? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand, like, what's the big defense between, like, trying to get not, trying not to get worked? Like, I don't know. It's just, whatever. It's just, it's, it's stupid to me. Um, But yeah, like, I, I don't know. I'm enjoying the Josh Alexander storyline. And at the end of the day, like, it was a fun story. It was a fun story. It, it, it created some buzz, even if only among the Impact fans, because let's not act like he doesn't still need buzz among the Impact fans. Josh Alexander proves every time he gets on the microphone that he can cut good promos. Josh Alexander proves every time he gets in the ring that he's a good wrestler. Josh Alexander proves every time they get a camera on him that he can bring that intensity and translate coming through your TV screen as an ass kicker, okay? Like, he's the whole package. He does have the whole package. But all of that said, we still don't get the same kind of pop when he when his music hits as we get when Jay White's music hits. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, so there's something that needs to be done there. And I'm all about, you know, let's keep running angles and figuring out what we can do to make him feel like a big deal when he appears on TV in front of the audience. So I'm all for it. Like whatever you got to do, make it feel real. Like whatever, of course you're supposed to make it feel real. Um, but yeah, like to me, this is all part of the writing team doing what they can do to make Josh Alexander hot. You know what I mean? Like make him hot to the audience. The, I, I feel like the ultimate goal, at least if I were producing a wrestling show, my ultimate goal would be that when this person's music hits, I want people to lose their fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I want. And, and when Josh Alexander ran through that crowd at sacrifice in a perfect world, that's what you want. You want people to go, ah! God, he's here his visa's not expired you know what i mean like whatever <laughs> and then when he like it when he announces like oh i signed a long-term contract ah! like that's what you want right that's right. not necessarily what we got but that's at least that's not how it came across on tv but that's what you want and i, I think if you're impact wrestling you got to keep working keep coming up with stuff and ways to present it until that's the reaction that you're getting because if this is going to be your top guy then he needs to feel like a top guy yeah oh yeah all right. So I, what I want to do here uh, for for uh, for time's sake is I want to buzz through this a little bit quickly. And I tell you what, you stop me when there is a point you want to kind of discuss and go over. All right. Sure. Yeah. All right. So we'll do this. OK, here we go. So uh, Scott Demore gives Moose the contract for his impact world title defense against Josh Alexander at Rebellion and says that if he doesn't have it signed by next week, he'll be stripped of the impact world title. All let right, me say, right. let me say real now. Contract signings are so stupid. He just mm -hmm. five minutes before that said, Kenny King, you're taking on Willie Mack and it's next. Right. Like, just, right. I don't, it, I never understood the contract thing. Like, <laughs> you make the matches, they wrestle. You've been like, worked, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, continue. All right. John Schuyler versus Crazy Steve. Oh, John Schuyler versus Crazy Steve versus Ace Austin with Mad Men Filton. For an, in an X division qualifier, uh, Ace Austin wins with the fold, and uh, you kind of predicted where this is all going. That the, the the X division title match at Rebellion is going to be Trey Miguel versus uh, Ace Austin and Mike Bailey, right? That's yeah, man. The minute going. they put out the match graphic and there was two silhouettes, I was like, "It's Mike Bailey and Ace Austin. Like, what are we doing here?" I, I. I'm all for having matches with stakes. Mm -hmm. I have more wins on TV than Crazy Steve and John Schuyler this year. <laughs> like the the first the, the the match was actually okay, and the the finish of the match was actually very creative. But uh, we know you don't give someone a book and be like, "Hey, here's the end of the story. Now go ahead and right. read it." Like you, right. I, so I don't want to now. You know, right. so it's just like. If it's something that blatant, it's kind of, dude, like AEW did the two tag team battle royals. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that Red Dragon was going to win one and the Young Bucks the other. Like, Why did you waste 
half an hour of each episode for us to just get to the conclusion that everyone knew what was going to happen. Great so if, if you're creatively, I, I, everyone probably doesn't agree with this, but this is just me as a, as a, someone who watches wrestling. Like if I know where you're going with this, just, just fucking make the match. Like I, I, I only want to see number one contender matches and all that. If you want to shake stuff up and really surprise us. Like, do you remember yeah. um, years ago, man, WWE had a, a battle royal of all the wrestlers on the roster who have never been world champion and the winner who was going to wrestle John Cena for the title. And that was a legitimate like, yo, who's going to who's going to win this match? Like if there, it, it wasn't like, uh, oh, well, we know where this is going. We know who's going to win. Like and Sheamus wins it and then Sheamus ends up winning the damn title. Right. You know what I mean? Like that was very there was a lot of shock value to that at the time. So when I see like tournaments and number one contenders matches and stuff if, if i already know the the end result like because you've been telling us forever it's what's going to be like i just i i check out man like I, yeah you know but we know this is what, what it's going to be like come on john skyler and crazy steve like we knew we knew they weren't going to win the match right yeah oh so. yeah no i get that i totally get that that's a that, that does take a lot of the suspense out of it for you yeah. um all right so backstage, we get Raj Singh confronting Bupinder Gujar uh, and asked why he hasn't been returning his phone calls. Then former Impact star Larry D makes a surprising reappearance and knocks out Singh with a right hand. Um, next, we get Violet by Design reflecting on defeating their former allies, the Good Brothers, to become the Impact World Tag Team Champions at Sacrifice. Eric Young reveals that it was all by design. All right, next we had Knockouts World Tag Team Champion. I'm sorry, Knockouts World Champion Tasha Steels. Say it right, Knockouts World Champion Tasha Steels and Savannah Evans and Knockouts World Tag Team Champions, The Influence, Madison Rain and Tanil Dashwood with Caleb with a K versus Mickey James, Chelsea Green, and The Inspiration in an all-star Knockouts tag. Um, what? Is Why is... Why is the team with three champions losing? Um, because... I, dude, I can't stand that man. When when uh, right and and Tasha Steele took the pin. Yeah, right. Like, come on, that 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 could have been done better. Absolutely, Keep Mickey James strong. Like, right. We <laughs> make, make we must have got hardcore country playing for about four straight minutes before this match started, which is fine. Yeah. It's a great song, but I was like, why are they not starting the match? It was just yeah. playing forever. Um, and also Chelsea Green. It, Chelsea Green is kind of starting to look like she's going to be like a Mickey James stalker, kind of like Mickey James yeah. was with Trish Stratus back in the day, which is like, oh, that's an interesting angle that I didn't really see this taking, but that could be an interesting way to go with this. I'm kind of wondering if they're actually working, working us and those two are just going to be a tag team with a weird dynamic, you know? But but here's the thing. Uh, whenever you drop the name in wrestling, whenever you drop the word friend, not the name, but the word friend, mm-hmm. that is letting you know that the, someone's going to turn on someone. Yes. Like they 100%. never say two wrestlers are friends yes. unless, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, when Moose turned on Eddie Edwards, they're like, oh, his best friend. They have right. never been best friends on television prior to that. <laughs> you know, we just saw yep. Eddie with, with Davey Richards for years, and you're going to tell me Moose is his best friend? Right. You know, so anytime they drop that word, that typically means, okay, someone's someone's turning. Yep. Um, but I see the reason her turning now is like, I, I think Mickey's going to get her rematch for Tasha Steeles, mm-hmm. and I think that's where uh, – Chelsea will screw her out because she was like, you were supposed to still be the champion. Yeah. You know? Hmm. So now it's interesting. Now it's up yeah. to me. You know, I, I'm going to go win this thing now. Like you're not getting it back. Like you had your, you know, right. That's we got to find some way, some way to get there. Like we need, uh, we need Cardona and Chelsea coming out together. You know what I mean? Being the couple that you love to hate. I feel like that's uh that, that we, we got to get there. That's what they're doing on the Indies. It's a hot act. You got to yeah. get that on TV. If you're in back. Yeah. All right. Following his victory over PCO at Sacrifice, Jonah says he doesn't believe in monsters, but monsters believe in him. Jonah claims that he broke PCO's neck, proving to the world that he is indeed human. I love this promo, by the way. Jonah 
coming off like a complete badass. And I'm watching this sitting here thinking, how is he not the number one contender for the world championship or close to it or the X division championship or something like he is destroying people. And um, if you're impact, this is the kind of guy you want to have a title on. And I would not have any problem with him taking the X division title off Trey Miguel, because as much as I'm, I'm, I'm here for Trey Miguel. Um, like, I think he's a, 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 a rising star and, and he's dope and all of that. Like, Jonah is just, he's killing it right now. He's killing it right now. And if you're impact, that's the type of talent who should be carrying a title. So um, I would, man, I'd, I, I would have him uh, maybe like after the, after the, the Trey Miguel wins the, the X division triple threat at rebellion, I'd have Jonah come out and just lay waste to him. Like just destroy him. You know what I mean? Like just destroy yeah. him and just have him just keep, you know, like destroying people and destroying people and calling out Trey Miguel and then have him call out Trey Miguel. Trey Miguel come out, defend the title and actually lose it. And then you've got Jonah keep destroying people. And then eventually maybe months down the line, maybe at bound for glory, you have Trey Miguel win it back from Jonah. You know what I mean? Look at that. Look at that storyteller right there. Look yeah, at that and, storyteller. You right know, there. and I, I made the comment um after reviewing uh one of the pay-per-views recently, and uh I had said, you know, when jo when uh Jonah ended up beating Crazy Steve, not Crazy Steve, but Black Taurus, I was like, the natural progression for him at this point is is championship. And that's yes. that's where I was like, you know, the the uh the mid card <laughs> title is missing from this company because that's right. You know, a lot of time with championships, they always force someone into a role. Like with him, it's a very natural progression. Like that should be next for him, right? So you know, hopefully it's uh, hopefully they Absolutely. do that. So I hope that's I hope that's that's where he's going. All right. All right. So up next, we have the Bullet Club addressing the Impact Zone just days after Sacrifice where Jay White defeated Alex Shelley in a banger, by the way. And the Good Brothers dropped the Impact World Tag Team Championship to Violent by Design. Doc Gallo says it's not about funding games anymore and vows to become Impact World Tag Team Champions once again, because that's what we all really want, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Jay White calls out Shelley and offers to too sweet him. Shelly declines the offer, but says that he has no regrets about his performance and sacrifice because it was a war. Regardless of who came out on top, Shelly is hurt by the fact that White didn't shake his hand at sacrifice and everything they've been through. White says it's not personal, it's just business. White claims that everything in professional wrestling happens because of him. Shelly responds by saying that Jay White happened because of him. Shelly's longtime ally, Chris Saban, joins him on stage, leading to a challenge for a tag team match next week. The Motor City Machine Guns versus Jay White and Chris Bay of the Bullet Club. Um, I love this. This was, this kind of, I felt like, took a long, a long way to get to this, to the point of making the match. But Everything was made to feel personal. And I liked how in an in instant, they smoothed over the Motor City Machine Gun thing. Like in my eyes, it was like, yo, Alex Shelley just basically abandoned Impact Wrestling and said, F y'all, I'm out of here. And now he comes back to do some business with Jay White. And it's like, oh, that's kind of trash. But, but in a second, putting him and Alex Shelley back together like was just like, oh, yeah, I do want to see it. I do want to see it. You know and and I mean? they're taking it back to because you remember Alex Shelley obviously was in the initial hard to kill mm -hmm. uh, three what, three on three match, six man tag. Yep. Because clearly they, they were trying, you know, I think they wanted to branch that into a most motor, motor city uh -huh. machine guns versus the Good Brothers. So we're, we're, we're coming back to that. Yes. You know. Yes. Yes. And I'm all I'm all for like the Good Brothers in like a match to kind of like earn my attention as opposed to just giving them the title and I'm supposed to care about them just because they're there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's 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 where, you know, they need to do better with the Good Brothers for me is like giving me something to actually care about when they're on the on the TV. I thought right. it's funny that they wanted to put the tag division on notice where it's just like, dude, you've been steamrolling this tag team division right not because you're the best team necessarily just because that was probably in your contract it i mean 
you guys are not underdogs here. You're not uh, trying to get back to your winning ways. Like you've done any anything but lose. Right. I don't think they've ever lost aside from the two times they lost the belts. And I also very much feel like there is a holding pattern going on for these guys to all appear on AEW, which by the way, I love yeah. for Chris Bay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause he deserves to get in front of a big audience like that. Uh, all right. So Josh Alexander tells Scott Demore that it should be him in the main event against Eddie Edwards tonight, not Rich Swan. Demore gives Alexander a match against Honor No More member Matt Taven next week and tells him to focus on his Impact World Title opportunity against Moose at Rebellion. Uh, then Jabel, J- Jabel, Giselle Shaw and Lady Frost interrupt Deanna Perazzo's interview and she offers them both a shot at the ROH World Championship and the AAA Reina Duranas Championship in a special triple threat champ champ challenge next week. Um, to me, I don't know that there's any way you could say that nobody is winning this but Deanna Perazzo, other than throwing a triple threat match in where it's completely nondescript on what would happen to the titles. Like, there's no way anybody but Deanna Perazzo is winning this match. Yeah, like, uh, you know, he he kind of pointed out. Uh, Tom pointed out, well, both titles will be on the line. Like, basically, whoever wins will get both belts. So he he does a good job of filling in the cracks of describing yes. things when it's not so there. Like when, like when Chelsea Green came out, you know, he, he, he hit hit her, you know, hit us with the story. Well, she's been, you know, she's, I guess she really did get hurt. Meltzer says she really got hurt. So I, I don't know. But uh, I, I think it's all phony as shit i mean they put out phony x-rays well they're real right, x-rays right. but they put out x-rays from 2021 right, um, right. that's why you can't go too phony because people you you know people are going to pick up on that stuff but um my point was she came out and he said oh well she's she is opting not to get surgery they have medically cleared her instead of her just showing up with a freaking cast and wrestling like i put on twitter like it's a modern day a miracle of modern day wrestling. I mean, a modern day <laughs> right. medicine, you know, but at least they wrestling told us, medicine. right. But at least they told us, okay, well, she's, she's choosing to do this, which I, I don't understand the whole medically cleared thing. If a wrestler just says, okay, I'm good. And I want to wrestle. Oh, oh, okay. You're good. Right. You know, it, it's like weeks ago when uh Dr. Ross said Eddie Edwards wasn't medically cleared. I'm like, what did you base that off that? He said he couldn't wrestle or was an actual assessment here? Because if you did an actual <laughs> assessment, you would have found that there was nothing. So, well, you, we all saw him assess Chelsea Green at ringside with his right. bag of ice. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Just, are, are you okay? It's funny because, uh, you know, I, for years I used to train in, uh, in the Air Force. Used to teach uh, medical classes. It was called like combat casualty care. It's like quick medical classes for when you're out in the field and you're out in yep. combat and something happens. So I was an instructor for that. And I, I know that like there's a basic level of assessment you have to do, uh, and I don't. See, <laughs> so when I see this and I see a phony doctor and just like, are you okay? Or, you know, just just you know, there's no there's there has to be something. You got to bring something out there to, you know. You know to check her. Uh, before we move on, we didn't talk about Willie Mack versus <laughs> Kenny King. I don't know how we completely just like glossed over that. Uh, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was early. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was it was early because we were talking about the angle and then we moved into what it came after it. So I, I do want to say, um, I mean, it was a great match. I didn't expect Willie Mack to win just because I keep thinking Honor, Honor No More is not going to take these L's on a regular basis, but they are. Uh, <laughs> you know, so we're going to this like we're rest, lots of wrestling stables do this where our leader is the only one who can win a match mm-hmm. and everyone else just gets fed to whoever you know so i would like to see this stable a lot stronger but they're choosing not to go that direction obviously so um i I, you know i don't necessarily hate that and i'm gonna tell you why i i don't know that these this group of dudes should just be running rough shot over impact yeah because who would they be beating actually i mean there's no jobber males like that's what i'm saying yeah. Right? So for them to come up and like as a young fan, it turned me off that the NWO was killing everybody. I hated that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I, I hated that. And it's funny because like 
I saw a couple of weeks ago uh, that Conrad Thompson posted they were going to do like a Sting, a Sting's 1998 in review. And they posted a picture of him with the red and black NWO Wolfpack face paint on. And I remember that Sting joining the NWO was the exact point where I tuned out of WCW because Sting versus the NWO was my favorite wrestling storyline of all time. And to me, Sting was supposed to be the hero that ultimately fought through and dismantled the NWO. And when Sting joined the NWO, that just literally like, that just, that, I was like, yeah. no, I, there's, there's nothing else for, to see here. Like yeah, at that point, um, so that kind of almost killed my fandom of like WCW. And um, and yeah, like honestly, I can honestly say that that's when I stopped like faithfully watching Nitro. And so um, the bad guys shouldn't just come in and just be scraping all the good guys. But if they have one dominant bad guy, and in this case, it's a bad guy who is an impact guy, then to me, that makes sense. And yeah. by the way, Honor No More being set up as the heel army to, to uh, obstruct Josh Alexander from getting back the world title, I love it. I love it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't think Josh Alexander should beat Moose for the title at Rebellion because I think he should continue to chase it. Like keep making him chase it until all the people are just like foaming at the mouth to see Josh Alexander finally get his hands on this title. And so make him keep chasing it. Make Honor No More get in the way. Build up Eddie Edwards. You know what I mean? Like let Eddie Edwards get a shot before um, – uh, and Josh Alexander has to try to stop Eddie Edwards from winning it. You know what I mean? Like all of this stuff, just do whatever you got to do. But again, make us the fans want to go in our pocket and give you money to see Josh Alexander win that world title. Cause we're not there yet. We're not there. Right, yet. Definitely not. And I apologize because I took this a completely different direction. We were talking about the good brothers and motor city machine guns and, and all that. <laughs> I do want to say, I thought Alex Shelley's promo was so good and he carried himself so well and he was so well spoken and, and believable and natural. When he was talking, I was like, dude, this dude could be the world champion. Like this dude could, he could be like go into that main event scene. Like if they, if they decided, okay, we're going to do a singles run for Alex Shelley, like it would work. You know, he, he can talk and he doesn't come across as super white meat and, and, or nothing like that. Like he's, he just, he's a natural. Yeah. You know, um, and they're always kind of gonna, they're going to always relegate him to this tag team role because he's not really part of the company. He's just kind of showing up, doing some stuff. But if they were just like, "Yo, we're going to push this dude as a babyface singles guy," like I think it could work. I mean, I'm listening to this promo. I was like, "Dude, he can hold his own," you know. But you got to think there's a reason why, right? You got to think there's a reason why that's never been, right? Like why why hasn't he ever, you know? Why hasn't Alex Shelley ever gotten that shot to be the world champion? And, you know, Chris Saban has. Right? You're right. So, um, so there has to be something. And again, like I take this back to like Sting, right? Like Sting in like 1998, 1999, like in my opinion, like Sting versus Hulk Hogan at um, Starcade 98 should have been easy peasy. Sting whoops his ass up and down the arena, pins him clean in the middle or or, or taps him out in the Scorpion Deathlock. But Eric Bischoff has told this story like a hundred million times that he did not have, he was not comfortable with Sting's like preparation, his state of mind, like his condition when he arrived to the arena that day. Part of that is probably just because he was also in Hulk Hogan's pocket and Hulk, Hogan, Hulk didn't want to just go out there and just do a job, you know what I mean? Like he should have. But anyway, if Alex Shelley looks to the rest of the world like somebody who we want to cheer for and watch have big matches, but a company has not put him in, in position to do that yet. There's probably something there. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's probably something there. Like there's no way that all the fans could be like, we love Alex Shelley and no promoter is like, well, he's our world champion. You know what I mean? Like there's no, <laughs> you know, so there has to be, there has to be a reason there. And I think, you know, part of the reason is like, you know, I don't know, maybe he's not reliable. I don't know who knows, but if if we can see the talent right and no promoter has gotten behind him there has to be a reason you know? yeah makes so. sense makes sense all right so uh the war between honor no more and team impact is far from over as former friends eddie edwards and rich swan collide in tonight's main event 
Uh, whew. Swan launched himself off the apron to jumpstart the match. They brawl around the ringside area before heading into the ring where Eddie Edwards takes control with a back elbow. Honor No More's Maria Canellas joins Tom Hannafin and Matthew Raywald on commentary. Edwards hits a belly-to-belly -belly suplex out of the corner. Swan hits a modified 619, but crashes and burns on the follow-up flip from the apron. Swan sends Edwards crashing to the floor with a wild Hurricane Rana. Both men exchange strikes in the middle of the ring with Swan gaining the upper hand following a clothesline. Edwards locks in a half Boston Crab, but Swan gets to the bottom rope in order to break the hold. Swan counters the Tiger Driver into a pinning predicament for a near fall. Edwards counters the handspring cutter into a modified blue thunderbomb for two. Edwards successfully hits the Tiger Driver, but it's still not enough to keep Swan down. Swan connects with back-to-back -back handspring cutters. Edwards avoids the 450 splash, hits the Boston knee party, and spikes Edwards with a driver. What what did Maria call this? Some sort of driver. Uh, it was, but it, it's a, uh, apparently it's a move that Eddie Edwards used to do in, in Ring of Honor, but yeah. some sort of like a cross leg driver situation to uh, get the win. This was an excellent match, and Eddie Edwards won. And I don't know more. Join Eddie Edwards in the ring as Impact went off the air. What do you think of this episode and the story as it is building so far? So, so I think that move is called the Emerald Fusion, but he, there's something he calls it. They're, they they gave us some name for it, but yeah, this match was great. And they, these are two. I, I love. I mean, I love Rich Swan. Uh, people were saying so he's not world champion material when he was the champion. Like, dude, I said, well, point out a bad Rich Swan match, you know. And I don't just mean he goes out there like a young bucks and does some fucking flips. And I'm telling you, oh, he's, he's the best person on the roster. Like, Rich Swan delivers, delivers. Like, he puts on real wrestling matches and he's flashy and fun. And uh, I just enjoy everything he does. I, I enjoy every match. And I really enjoyed this. This, this you know, it went on kind of long, but it was just like, it was just great. It was just uh, a lot of fun to watch. I knew Swan was going to lose. When Willie Mack won, I was like, okay, Swan's clearly going to lose. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Eddie's not going to take any losses at this point. So, uh, the, great match, uh, very, very, very solid episode. You know, they've they have, um, you know, we have confirmation that they've been listening to some of the things that we say, and uh, we can now hear the audience a lot better. And uh, they're they're making you know the color correction is is not near an issue. I don't even know if they've. I think they completely stopped doing. It, as a matter of fact, like I'm not even noticing it now. Uh, you know, it so the, so the, drastic. Like you gotta wonder, like, did they just think that was like cool and stylized, like a noir type film? Like, did you... yeah. So the best example, because you asked me a couple of weeks ago, why why is it that people overcompensate like that? The best example I can give you, and everyone can relate to this, is that girl on your Facebook page who, mm -hmm. for the first time, got some kind of app and like, oh, I can airbrush myself. <laughs> and they move it all the way, you know, the slider all the way to the right. And their right. untrained eye is like, this looks really good. And to them, they're just like, I look like a freaking model. And everyone else looking at it is like, <laughs> you got way too much of a filter on there, but they don't see that. But I promise you, like two or three years later, they're gonna look back at it I'm like, oh my god, you know. But it's it's, and that's why I said it's um lack of experience because the untrained eye, the untrained ear, when when you have shiny new toys that manipulate the way something sounds and looks, you always take it to extremes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had to learn that with music um, mixing for the longest time. Is I would take vocals and oh, I'm gonna make you know. I'm going to do this and this It's going to echo and all this shit. And, and I had people tell me for a long time, like, dude, less is more like you have to do almost nothing. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, you got to have sound effects on there. So it could sound cool. And then right. you listen back at that a year, a year later, you're like, this sounds like freaking crap. <laughs> you know, like um, the way that I've always, um, I, I mean, I've been a certified graphic designer for years and years. The way that I've always, um, when it comes to airbrush or any kind of setting, is I will take that that setting and go, I'll, I'll make a hard right, and then you start dragging it until the setting mm -hmm. disappears, and then when it and then you give it a slight bump backwards, and that gives it just that little bit of something. Like you 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 know, you just want it to give it a little bit of sharpness or a little bit of pop. Like 
that's it. The, the minute you can first see it working, that's when you stop. Right. You know, that's kind of the way that stuff's supposed to work. But, um, supposed to. but yeah, so it seems like they've been making those adjustments. And, but yeah, the show was, which was, as I said a couple of times, very easy to consume. Even when we got to this point or to the main event, I was like, damn, we're already here. You know, like it just, something about this episode really flew for me. Right. Goodbye. Yeah, no, nah, this this was a good episode, man. I really enjoyed it. And Impact has been doing really well with the episodes, man. Like the only thing that just did, I I I just want I want to see them growing the fan base and having more exciting looking shows and you know figuring out how to you know skew maybe a little bit younger in their fan base. Not because like I want to look out and see a beautiful audience, but because I think when you when you're when you're core demographic is like people who are like 35 40 uh like they're not going to be standing up on their feet cheering and bringing signs and you know it's like acting like young people you know what i mean so like <clears throat> they need to find a way to go after that younger demographic a little bit to make the shows feel a little bit more fun and lively younger demographic you know family like whatever it is but um because they're doing the work man as far as uh, as far as you know storylines and matches like they're delivering on that aspect it's just some of the other stuff they just got to get right so that this show feels a little more fun but as a fan i am enjoying this show man i just want to see it blossom you know what i'm saying like yeah hell I yeah see it bloom and that's why you know that's why for a long time i was been not i was knocking the the, the throwbacks to ecw and dreamer and rhino and going old school because ecw existed for like five years and i know when i was watching it on tv i was like i mean i'm 42 now like i was 18 or 19 when that in the i don't know if it was at the beginning and whatever i just know i was watching it and i was in my late teen, teenage years i'm 42 now Dude, like why are you why are you trying to speak to me from as a you know i, I watched that years ago as a teenager Right. I'm getting in that old towards that older de demographic right now. Uh, I'm not going to go to a show like I go to a lot of wrestling shows, dude. I've never like, yeah, rah rah, yo, yeah. you know that that's just not me. <laughs> like I'm yeah, maybe yeah. when I was in my twenties, but you know, yeah, we want to. When they scan the audience, man, they, I, I've knocked them for this in the past, but they seem to a lot of the times they'll like focus on these like really old people in the audience, and I'm just like. Yeah. Do you see AEW or, or WWE be like, hey, here's this 60 year old guy in the front row? Like, let's show him. <laughs> he looks like Willie Nelson. Like, let's show him on the screen. Like, they don't right. do I that. Mean, so not... they, they got they got to focus on who's there, right? You know what I mean? You got to focus yeah. on who's there. So like, I I I give. Listen, I I don't want to. I don't want people like to not don't go don't not go to the shows. Like, I don't want them to show me on camera and make fun of me because I'm an old guy. Not f that. Like, you know, I'm go enjoy shit. the show. Yeah. But I'm talking right. But I'm talking about like for from Impact's point of view, like you got to figure out how to target that. You know, like I hate to talk demographic language, but that you know, 18 to 35 year old because those are the people that are going to be like, you know, again, like coming with this with with the signs and going crazy and and all the other stuff. And it just, I think, again. It just it begets a more fun experience for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just it is what it is, right? Like people of that older age demographic don't have the energy to be up like cheering for three hours nonstop. Yeah. I remember when I went and saw Impact. God, this was years ago when they were in one of the last times they were in Manhattan, and um, it was so much fun. But I was exhausted at the end of the tapings so exhausted you know what i mean it's just like you know yeah. you can't ask me just to sit there through so two tapings you know what i mean of, of a two-hour show and like by the by the time we got to that second show i was like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah Ooh. all right <laughs> you know I mean? yeah yay <laughs> oh yeah, man. And, you know they have a habit too of there's you know there's a few fans who travel to all the shows all the pay-per-views they have a habit of like, we're going to get that person on camera and we're going to get them on multiple times. Um, and, you know, and I've, I've mentioned before at some of the pay-per-views like Bound for Glory in the first five minutes of the show, they get panned the crowd. I knew everyone from Twitter and I, I, they're trying to show, hey, we have super fans. But the problem is when you do that, it subconsciously tells the people like, hey, these are the only five people who watch the show. Like, that's why you have to like be really, really careful with that. <laughs> And that's why I, you know, um, that that's what hurt the impact zone in Orlando. You saw the same people in the front row all the time. 
you know so it it gives the impression that that the audience is so small that you you recognize them you know um and that's was one of my issues with josh matthews for a while doing everything there was an impact podcast there was a youtube show there was this and this like who we're gonna get josh matthews to do it and it came across like Josh Matthews is the only person who talks about impact wrestling in this world. You know, he's, he's the only non wrestler on TV who watches impact watches TNA. Like that's how it would just come across because he, it was just, it was always him. And like, you have to hear other people uh, talk about it sometimes. Like that's, you know, that, that, that all falls into marketing and stuff. Cause marketing is like a mind game. That's kind of how I look at it. You, you have, you're, promotion is like this is what we want you to watch and marketing is this is how we're going to get you to want to watch it you know so um i just i i i don't i just that's just something for me that's something how i feel you can't show the same faces can't have the same people talking because it makes it look like there's a tiny audience that watch it you know so that's a great great point that's a great point um <clears throat> But from like, uh, you know, a wrestling and storytelling standpoint, like I cannot stress enough, Impact is, I, I honestly, even with all the things we might point out about like production or stuff like that, I enjoy watching Impact every week more than I enjoy watching Dynamite, straight up. Yeah, I enjoy absolutely. watching Impact every week more than I enjoy watching Rampage, straight up. And I watch, I watch them all, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> I can honestly say I enjoy watching Impact every week more than I enjoy watching Monday Night Raw because it's just Monday Night Raw is too long and there's too much filler. You, you know, like you get enough, like you get, you get a few good things. Like out of any show, Impact has the most consistently good stuff throughout the show. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? As opposed to like one good thing. Like I love when I watch uh, SmackDown, like I love when Roman's on, you know what I mean? I love when the Usos are on. Um, I love when Sasha Banks is on. I'm into whatever like Naomi is doing. But like, you know, but, but so that's enough to like make SmackDown interesting for me. Um, but like a lot of times on like Monday Night Raw, like the show is just so long, right? It's so long that it's just like filler and really long talking segments and you know, whatever. But like, I can honestly say, man, like Impact, I enjoy Impact on a week to week basis, probably as much, if not more than any other show. So, um, so yeah, man, like I want to give Impact their credit. They are doing a lot in terms of like, just putting on an entertaining show. I just wanted to feel more fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, yeah. like I wanted to be something where when I show other fans this this product, they're like, oh yeah, you know, right? That, that is kind of dope. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons I was saying, N um, not NXT, <clears throat> NWA is such a chore right now because that was one of the big things pre-pandemic. The crowd was having a blast watching it. And that was one of the things that made it fun to watch. Now the crowd is sitting on his hands. Uh, and that's because they have a bunch of talent. <clears throat> Every episode, they bring out some nobodies and put them in a match. Um, and I mean, when I say nobodies, I mean someone that guys that were not on anyone else's radar. Like they wouldn't, they could not get a tryout at MLW. Mm. You know? And NWA is like, we're going to feature these dudes. They're guys who will never get past that level ever. Like, so you know what's what's like you know kind of like unfortunate here is like. As Impact fans, this is kind of where we are on some level, except though I would say that's not totally fair to Impact, except for in, in this sense. You're watching, like, you're, you're, wa you're, you're, you're hoping for a comeback of something that was already an offshoot. You know what I mean? And that's kind of where Impact is right now, right? All the fans who are here, and, and I hate to, you know, say this as though I'm discrediting impact because again, they are putting on a good show on a week to week basis, but we're all still just kind of hoping they can find a way to like regain some of that past momentum, some of that past steam, even though we're enjoying this, the, the show as it is right now, like we're still kind of hoping they can find a way to get their mojo back. You know what I mean? And if you're NWA, like you had limited mojo to begin with. So to now be hoping you can get that back, that's a low place, man. That's a low place. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And hopefully, hopefully we get where it's never going to get to the point it was. That's just a fact and people have to understand that. But 
they can they can grow, they can get to a good place and a healthy place. And uh, you know, we see MLW and NWA like even Lucha Underground when that was really hot. I mean, they've never Ring of Honor too. Like they've never had the audience impact has. You know, right. I, and I mean currently has. So, you know, uh, I'd be happy with getting back to the pop TV days of three hundred thousand. <laughs> I think that would be a big win at this point. Yeah, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think it's do it's certain it is a hundred percent doable. That's the that's my thing is that I know this is doable. Like, I see people posting clips from GCW shows with that have so many more people than Impact. You know what I mean? Like, Impact just needs that infusion of buzz. Zicky Dice's promotion buzz. has more. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like they like Impact. Just, I think people are still people still feel a little bit of like ill impact you know what i mean yeah and they just gotta find a way to make their product hot dog they gotta find a way to make their product like undeniably hot and it's doable it's not undoable but but i tell you what though the answer to getting there is not to keep digging up tna it's not yeah it's not because all the people who are here now most of them are like oh man like i just said hoping the impact will find a way to get get their levels back and I think the the answer is not trying to get their levels back. It's finding a new way to move forward and go up. I unfollowed their Twitter the other day. I finally, there's the last mm-hmm. social media of theirs I followed. They posted wow. some brother, brother Nero shit. I was like, I'm done. Um, <laughs> and it would be so different if they're like, Jeff Hardy, congratulations on your debut. Thank you for everything. Uh, had a blast with you being brother Nero. I'm making it sound kind of cheesy, but I, but I'm, I'm just saying there's a different there's a way to deliver that where you're still getting your clips out there and maybe trying to get some su- subscriptions without be- coming across like desperate. And uh, I'm going to keep saying it. When they post post that stuff, you read the comments, you're just popping the people who already watch. Like there's no one in there who are like, "Oh my gosh, thanks for thank you for sending like I'm going to download this app right now and see what I've been missing." Like that's never happened a single time. It's all people who are popping that that already watch the the product and they're praising Impact Twitter for oh thank you you know you guys are awesome like no you're not um, <laughs> I'd be shocked if that shocked if that is actually driving subscribers to their right they have the the, the worst like marketing of, of Impact Plus ever like yeah. you don't know if it's and same thing I was saying this about YouTube they never put it out there like hey this is this is what it costs or this is part this is free and this is what what uh, what you got to pay for and this is the value you get they don't they don't do that they're just like check out impact plus here's here's brother nero like i, I just i was done dude i was just like i was almost done when they posted a brandy brandy Rhodes match after you know they were released from <laughs> AEW. like at that point i was like dude i won more of these stupid ass matches and i'm done um and they did i was like i'm done man Oh, man. <laughs> and, and on that note, uh, if you guys have, if you guys want to be a part of the show, go ahead and drop your comments down in the comment section below. And uh, we will have the mailbag coming a couple of times to you every couple of weeks. Just the best place to uh, drop your questions for the mailbag is on the Impact Lounge engagement group. Uh, on on Facebook, but you can also drop your comments in the comment section down here below below this video. Um, yeah, man, like you know, thank you guys for 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 taking time out to watch this video. Again, make sure you like, comment, rate, and subscribe. But the best thing, the absolute best thing you can do to help out the show is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets. Check me out at BQ Speaks on Twitter. That's right. And also, oh, also on Twitter, um, Twitter communities is kind of like a, a, a new thing. And uh, we have a, uh, a Twitter community for Impact, uh, for Impact fans. Let me see what this thing is called. I got a community. Twitterverse, Impact Twitterverse. Yes, it's called the Impact Wrestling Twitterverse. So go into the communities section of Twitter, like in, in the little tabs where you have like, you'll see like the spaces and all this other stuff. Go into the communities and search the Impact Wrestling Twitterverse. Actually, you can request to be a member, but um, a lot of it, uh, you have to be invited in. But find it, send a request, and I will let you in or BQ will let you in. 
Um, and uh, yeah, that that way we have our own little community on Twitter where we can post about Impact. It's a lot like a Facebook group. It's just on Twitter. So Impact Wrestling Twitterverse, go ahead and search that and join in so we can keep this Impact Wrestling conversation going on another platform. Um, you can find me on Twitter at TW Talking About, or you can follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. For anybody who has been following Talking About Pod, I, I apologize. I have been slacking. I fell the hell off with my updates on that channel, but it is coming back very soon. Um, yeah, so uh, once again, 4BQ, 4TW, thank you guys so much. We'll be back at you next week. Peace.